What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week we're throwing it back to the 90s with an old VHS player. And even though the VHS movies are from the 80s, I decided to throw those in just because they were some of my favorite movies growing up. So yeah, let's just jump into it. So starting off with the cube, I'm just going to quickly make sure that my scene is in centimeters. I did a quick Google search to find the correct dimensions of a VHS tape. I just wanted the proportions to be accurate since I didn't know the actual dimensions of my VHS player. I can just base that model around the tape size. So I'm going to start off with the cube and then start blocking out those main shapes. So I didn't want to spend too much time on the VHS tape, I didn't want to add too many polys and spend too much time adding all the detail just because the main object of this whole model was actually the VHS player. This was just going to be something else in the scene, just add a little more detail and make it a little more interesting. So I'm just copying from a Google image I found, just trying to get those main shapes and the main look of what a VHS tape would look like.
So here I'm just going to quickly add a different texture to that see-through plastic material just so I can see what those objects on the inside of the tape look like. But later on I will make this actually the same texture as the tape itself and I'll make it see-through directly in Substance Painter. But just for now, adding this separate material will just help me build the model and make it a little bit easier to see what those objects look like on the inside. So now starting off with another cube, I can start making the case for the tape. I ended up making two different styles, the classic ones that have the opening on the bottom that you slide the VHS movies into, but I also made this one right here where the opening's on the side, just like those classic ones you get from the video recorders you can take and there were just two different styles that I found so I decided to add them both. So I thought it would be cool to add a little piece of tape on the VHS just like it was from a recording like someone's birthday or graduation. So I'm going to start off with another cube and then start scaling that into place. Alright, so now that my VHS tapes are done, I can start moving on to start my VHS player. So starting off with another cube, I can start scaling it around the size of my VHS tape. I didn't know the actual proportions of my VHS player that I was referencing, so I just wanted to do a generic size and not worry too much about making it exact. So starting off with the cube, I can start blocking out my main shapes. So for the next little bit, it's kind of the same thing, just duplicating these rectangles over and over again, just to start blocking out every front cover and piece of plastic and metal that there is. So I'm going to let this play out a little bit, just as I start blocking out everything.
bottom piece, it is a different piece of metal, so I want to keep this actually here and I can use later. So I'm going to highlight all those faces and go Edit Mesh Extract, just to separate those faces from the object. And now start beveling some edges. So now moving on to the buttons, I'm going to start off with the shape I already have on the VHS player just to make my life easier and because it's already roughly in the shape of the button. And rather than adding all the holes where the buttons actually go into, you can't really tell where that seam is, where that cutout is since it's such a tight fit. So just to save myself a little bit of extra work, I'm not going to actually make those holes. I'm just going to create the buttons and then place them over top of this panel. So once I'm happy with how the button looks, I can duplicate it and start placing all my other ones. So when I got to these larger ones, I realized that there was a sharper edge on the bevel, it wasn't as rounded, so I'm just gonna start off with a cube and block out the same shape as this current button, and then I can add little tighter bevels to it. Here is the classic, you're looking at one reference and it looks fine and then you open up another picture and it looks a little bit different. So I just played around with these buttons and the sizes for the next little bit until I was happy with the shapes. So once I was happy with the buttons, I can start moving on to those side little indents that they have where the screws are. So I'm going to start adding an edge loop just so I can start adding a few more polys to where I want to boolean the hole. Next up was creating some 8 sided cylinders, obviously the lower poly is the easier it is to create your booleans and then actually start merging all those verts afterwards. So I did an 8 sided cylinder and just made two of those in the positions of those holes and then just combine them into one object, select both objects, go mesh boolean and then difference. And then boom, you have some holes.
And then once that boolean is made, I just want to make sure I go and connect all those vertices. So I go ahead with the multi-cut tool and then just start connecting all of those. And then I quickly realized that I actually don't want the boolean the whole way through. I just want a little indent on the outside. So I quickly go on the inside and actually fill in that hole. And later on, I actually remove all of these inside faces. So all this little work on the inside is not really necessary, but just showing that I actually didn't want the boolean a hole the whole way through. I just wanted a little indent. Next up, we're just copying over these holes to the opposite side of my VHS player. So to do that, I'm just gonna duplicate this object, select all those faces that I created, and with the extract tool, I can separate them from this object. Then just deleting all the other faces, I have this row that I'm gonna copy over to the opposite side. So I can either just rotate them 180 degrees, or with the duplicate special tool, I can just mirror the object over. Either way will work, but I'm gonna line that up to that hole that I made, and then just merge all of those vertices together. Now, as you may already know, as I create these models a lot of the time, I just don't pay too much attention to topology or the polys or anything as I'm creating it, just because it makes me work a little more freely with the model and the shapes. And then when the UVing comes, I tend to actually clean up the model. So sometimes actually backfires and makes my life a little more difficult. And in this case, that actually happens. So here I'm just creating a plane and I just made a bunch of polys and where I want to actually cut out all those holes where the vents are going to go. Now, there was a much easier way I could have done this, and I actually do show you in a little bit the actual proper way, so I just think that if I'm going to actually show the process, I should show the correct way of doing it rather than just a sloppy and quick way. And in this case, I just did the sloppy and quick way because I was just kind of in tunnel vision, creating this model as quick as I can. And later, just like I said, it backfires and I actually have to redo my work to make it just a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to go over that in a little bit, but here you can see me just starting off with a plane and then deleting those faces and creating basically a little separate object where I want that vent to be and then I can attach that later on to my actual VHS player just like I did those holes as I deleted those faces and then basically combine the objects and start merging the vertices. It's the exact same process but just with the vents. So here I am fast forwarded a little bit to when I already attached those vents on top of the case. Now I'm just going to show you a cleaner and just more efficient way of adding these holes rather than the way I did. I just went in and added bevels just like really quickly and as you can see if I highlight this 
it's pretty messy. You have all these, basically I would have to go through and attach all those vertices and it'd just be a lot of extra work to clean it up. Still looks fine, but there's a better way of doing it. So I'm gonna start off with another plane just like I created these ones and increase the subdivisions just so I can create all the rows that I want. Now I'm just gonna show you like two or three rows rather than creating all of them again. But just for the sake of the video, I wanna actually show you the correct way of doing it or one of the ways of doing it. There's so many ways you can create these, but this is just one. So now that I have all of the subdivisions, I can actually start highlighting the faces where I want those holes. So here I am just selecting those faces. Like I said, I'm just gonna do three just as an example. Now hitting three on my keyboard, I'm smoothing it out. You can already see the shape looks cleaner. So I can select all those edges, control E to extrude them and just extrude those downwards. Now it's looking a little rounded, so I'm gonna select those edges on the inside and just with the bevel tool I'll just create basically two of them just to help support those outside vertices. And it's already coming into shape so I'm just going to go select all of those edges and give it a small little bevel. And then when I hit three on my keyboard you will see that it looks much smoother, much cleaner, and I don't have all of those beveled edges like the other object. And if I move this over, you can see they actually looked very similar. Obviously, one's just a little thinner, but look how cleaner the topology is. And it just looks much better, and your workflow will be better. The textures will probably look better, and just makes everything, life is just easier. So do it correctly the first time. So here I am just fast forwarded again, just to when all those events were actually finished. And I want to show you a proper way of actually attaching this. Now you could do what I did before, which is a sloppy way, and just basically with the target wall tool, just connect all those vertices. But what you want to do is keep your quads. Uh, you want to try to keep it in fours, right? So now how these vents are spaced out, your model might be different, but I, if you can see every four faces would attach to one of these one side. So I have to attach four faces to one. Now there's different ways you can go about this, but I, like I said, I want to try to keep it in quads. So I can show you a quick example just with this plane. So I'm just going to change the subdivisions, put those to four, and then I can just duplicate this over into the others so I can show you an example of going from four faces to one. Now you want to keep, like I said, you want to keep your topology in quads if you can. And it is possible, you just have to put a little bit of thought into it. So I'm just going to delete these faces here so I can start with the four and then work my way up. So I'm just going to highlight those edges and control E to extrude and then using the target well tool I can merge those vertices over and then I can select those edges and go control delete to delete them. So here you can see I just went from four faces to two while keeping it in quads. So now the next step is just doing the exact same process again but this time going from two faces to one. So I can select those edges, control E to extrude them. I'm just gonna do that once again. And then with the target wall tool, I can merge those vertices over, select that edge and control delete to delete them. And then as you can see, it just went from two to one. And now I can just, with the target wall tool, just connect those vertices and everything is kept in quads and you just basically went from four sided to one sided, just like that. So that's the exact same process I'm gonna do all the way around those vents and connect them all the way through. Now you will probably have to add some edge loops just so you can get the proper spacings so you can attach those four sides to one or however sides to however sides are on your model. But I'm just going to show you now just, just what we did on that plane to this actual vent object. So using that target wall tool, I can start merging those vertices and then select those edges where the triangles are and then control delete to delete them. Sometimes you just have to stare at your model a little bit just to figure it out. My brain sometimes doesn't like to work when I'm thinking about this, so I just have to take an extra second to stare at it to see how it would work, but it is possible. And this is actually the proper way I should have done things, so just to show you guys, not I don't want to show you bad techniques, I want to show you the proper way of doing things, and this is what I should have done. So. Now I just went from four to two, just like we did before. I just want to merge those vertices to put them over to one. And then delete that edge. And then it's the same process for all the other. I just have to work my way around. Now 
it's a little tricky on the end here just because I stopped and obviously I'd have to keep doing that same process all the way around to have it clean but just showing you for these three vents how they would attach so now I can extrude that edge and like I said target weld tool again just merge those vertices and there we just went from four sides to one side and everything ends in quads and you'll find your model just looks a little bit cleaner everything flows a little bit better and you'll probably actually get better textures and you won't get weird artifacts in your faces when you're actually go to your renderer so now jumping back to the first time I actually created this the sloppy way um, I'm just gonna add some edge loops and just basically with the target well tool just attach them on now sometimes it's okay to do this if you're just working quickly and you're putting some concepts together or you're just not really, it depends what you're using the model for, so obviously feel free to do it quick like I did, but this is just a better way of doing it, and as you can see, I didn't do those, I just used a target well tool and just attached to the vertices, so it's a little bit messy, but if you try to keep everything in quads, you'll find that your models look much cleaner, your topology will look much cleaner, and you'll just get better results. So now quickly jumping to the back of the model, in the reference I saw that this top metal piece actually like hangs over a little bit so to do that I'm going to use the multi-cut tool just to create that line where I want that metal edge to be and then I can select all those faces and just extrude them a little bit and then just clean it up a little bit to look like it actually overhangs. Here I can select all those faces and then extrude them outwards and then using the target well tool I can just go merge some of those vertices and just so I can give it that illusion like this piece of metal actually hangs over a little bit. And then starting off with another cube, I can start blocking out that back panel.
next up is adding a few vents that are on the back of this object. So I'm just going to add a few edge loops and then select those faces and delete them. And then to create all those little attachments and little metal pieces on the back, I'm just going to start off with another cylinder and then start blocking out those shapes. Next up with just creating some little holes that are on the back. They have a few settings like audio and stuff that you can access through these little, basically little small booleans. So once again, starting off with a low poly cylinder, I'm going to start just positioning those where I can then combine them all together and then boolean out some holes. So once the boolean is done, I can go delete those faces and then start merging all those vertices. Alright, so now that majority of my VHS player is complete, I can go select those VHS tapes and then just start positioning them around, trying to figure out exactly how I want them to stack and how I want to show off these videotapes. So I'm just going to go play around with these shapes for a little bit until I find something I'm happy with. So I completely forgot about the bottom of the VHS player. Now I didn't have to actually add anything because it's not really in view, but I thought it'd be kind of cool just 
to add that little detail and add a few objects. So I'm going to start off with a few cylinders and start blocking out those main shapes and then just positioning them all on the bottom of the VHS player. So next up, I'm going to quickly see that the proportions are somewhat accurate, so I'm just going to take that VHS and make sure that it can fit inside of the VHS player, because that's probably important. So I almost missed it, but I noticed in the reference that this little door or flap that the VHS actually goes into actually has these little tiny um, bumps on the outside. So I'm going to add a few edge loops and then I can extrude those faces just to give it that little bump that it has. And then I also noticed that there's this little tiny red button that I almost missed as well that sits on the screen. So I'm going to add a few edge loops as well and then just cut out that hole where I want that button to go. And then I'm just going to go and add a few bumps just to those bottom knobs that are on the VHS player. I just want to give them a little bit more shape, so I'm going to go select some of those faces and extrude them outwards. 
So last but not least was the screws that sit on the side of the VHS player. So a quick and easy way to do that, is start off with the cylinder, just delete all those top faces and then fill in that hole. So you're going to have a face without any polys or edges on it. Then with the multi-cut tool, I can go and create that flat head screw, basically give it the width of that rectangle I was looking for. And then all I need to do next is just select those outside faces, extrude those upwards, and then with the multi-cut tool again, just go connect all those vertices just so you don't have any weird faces that are more than four sides. Um, it's just nice and quick, easy way to create a flat head screw. And then last but not least, just select all those edges and give them a small bevel. And then when the screw is done, just go position them in those small little boolean indents we made on the side of the VHS player. But that's basically it for the whole modeling. Alright, so now that the modeling is all wrapped up, I'm just going to show you exactly how I did the UVs and what the model looks like. So here is the model in its finished form. So here as you can see the bottom, I added these holes in, I made a row of like 11 of them and then once I was done one, just pasted them in just like we did the other vents, just nice and easy. Just adds a little more detail to the bottom and I grouped it into three different groups. So there's a VHS player on one map, the labels are all on their own map as well and then just the VHS's themselves. So I have one for the two VHS's that are on top, just so I can add a little more detail to them. And then the other one just consists of all the other guys that are just inside the boxes, as well as the bottom. I forgot to actually do the UVs on the VHS, so I just added those on my VHS map. I just had a lot of extra room, so just made my life a little easier. But that's exactly how I did the UVs and the textures, and now it's time to jump into substance. Okay, so now in Substance Painter, I can go load in my model from Maya. And I'm just going to jump in and raise the floor height. I forgot to do that in Maya, which I always do. I just want that floor to be on the bottom of the models. So now that that's looking good, I can go to my texture set settings, go bake my texture maps. So I can put my output size to 4K or whatever output size you'd like. And make sure to check on that use low poly mesh as high poly mesh and then bake your selected textures. So I'm going to start off with the VHS player. I'm going to go choose one of the smart materials. I think I chose that dark steel age texture and then I can go in and start tweaking those settings just removing all the rust and a lot of the dirt. Just start with a base texture that I'm happy with and I can start just tweaking those settings. So I find it sometimes difficult to see how these black textures, especially metals, look with the lighting. So I'm just going to jump to the display settings in the top right corner and just change the environmental map. Just choose a different lighting and mess around with just different light sources to see actually how the metals look. Like I said, the reflectivity really changes depending on the light source. So it's nice to change up the lighting just to see how it looks in different environments. So 
here I just decided to duplicate that material over again and apply it just to my back so I can separate the front of the case and the back of the case just because the shades of black I don't know if it was the lighting but they looked a little different so just to work a little more freely I just decided to copy that over so I can have two different materials for the case and now for the rest of the materials I'm gonna start applying different types of plastics and going in just tweaking the wear levels and the amount of reflectivity on them it's like I said, a lot of these plain textures, I always find it's a little difficult to get the reflectivity right. I find sometimes the plain textures without having a lot of materials that have a lot of grunge and wear and tear on them, it's hard to get that clean surface to look accurate or to look realistic. So I'm just gonna spend the next little bit just tweaking some of these settings. So after I was finally done tweaking those settings, which took a lot longer than I expected, it just those plain black materials were just causing me some problems, but I finally figured out something I was pretty happy with, so it's time to move on to the other materials. So for the next little bit, I'm just going to go through assigning different plastics and metals to the other objects and meshes on this VHS player.
So now that all the materials are on there, it's time to move on to all the letters. So I went ahead before I actually jumped into Substance and created alphas for all the labels. I had a difficult time finding fonts actually in Substance. And as you may know, you're pretty limited to the font selection in Substance Painter. So I went ahead and just created all of these alphas. Let me know in the comments if you'd like a little tutorial on how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. Just create a black and white image in Photoshop and then just drag those right into your Substance projects, set those as alphas and to the current session. And then depending on which material I have selected, like plastic or a metal, I can just basically assign that alpha to that and then paste that right onto my VHS player. So for the next little bit, I'm going to go through all the labels. There's quite a bit of labels, so I'll speed it up a little bit, but that's exactly the process I did. It was just jump into Photoshop, create those words, and then drag them right into my Substance project.
So now that all those labels are finally done, I'm just adding the last few and then I can jump onto the VHS tape textures. So for the VHS tape, I'm going to start off with another smart material, one of the plastic textures, and then just go tweak some of those settings. Now here I ended up switching it over to one of these plastic grainy textures just because I noticed in the reference the plastic had a little bit of bump to it so this one fit a little bit better. Here I'm just going to drag over one of these grunge textures into my metallic settings and just to give it a little bit more of a wear and a little bit of a dirt look to it so it's not so clean. So after looking at the reference for the VHS tape I noticed how the top has this grid pattern like this bump material that's on the top. And that was pretty easy to do. I just had to find a bump alpha in Substance Painter. So I found a tile generator alpha that already comes with Substance. And basically in that folder that contains the texture for this VHS tape, I just have to slide in a new one. I use the plastic material and then I can apply that alpha to that texture so I can get that bump material to show on my VHS tape. And all I have to do is just right click set it to a black mask and then assign it to whichever faces that I'd like on my VHS. So now that the plastic on the VHS tape is looking good, it's time to add that see-through plastic material. So to do that, I have to go to my shader settings quickly and change it from the alpha rough to alpha blending, which will then allow me to add an opacity channel to my texture. So here I'm going to start off with one of the glass films. After I change that shader over to the correct one, I can go add an opacity channel and I can just assign that to those meshes and then tweak just the settings and the opacity to get something that I'm happy with. And then finally for that little text that's imprinted on the top of these, um, it's kind of like a little bump. I'm going to do the exact same process that I did for the other grid pattern. I'm going to assign a plastic material to it and then find an alpha, just some text and font that I was happy with that was somewhat close to the reference photo. And I can type in the text that I needed, just change the height map to give it a little bit of a bump and then paste that right onto my mesh. Now that it's looking good, it's time to copy all of those over to the other VHS tape. Now I could have just duplicated that object and they could have been on the exact same spot on the UV map to save space, 
and just to save extra work to not actually have to reapply these now to the other object. But the reason why I didn't was because I wanted the details and the grunge to actually be different on each VHS tape. If they're on the exact same spot on the UV map, they're going to have the exact same textures and the exact same details. And because I wanted some nice close-ups of these models, I just thought it would be better to actually have them as separate objects and separate spaces on my UV. So that's the reasoning for it, um, just to add that little extra detail. And now for the front sticker, I just found a VHS image online. I used Back to the Future as one of my favorite movies growing up, so I decided to go with that one. And yes, I do know that the label on the side does say Back to the Future 2, and the top label says Back to the Future 1, but we'll keep that between us. Nobody will know, and you probably wouldn't know unless I said that, so it is what it is. But I found this image on Google, and just like all the other labels, just save as JPEG or a PNG and then you can drag that right into your substance project and then assign that as a texture and then to the current session. So here I'm just going to do that, try to align that up to my object and then I can paste that right onto my mesh. Now the sticker was looking a little bright so I'm just going to go change my opacity and just make it a little slightly transparent just to make it a little bit darker. So it's the exact same process as we just did for all of the others. I found this Jurassic Park image online and then saved it as a JPEG or a PNG and then dragged that right into my Substance project and applied that as a texture. So with the projection tool I can go ahead and just project all my other images onto my other meshes. So I found it kind of funny because this whole theme was going to be a 90s VHS player. So I decided for fun just to choose my favorite VHS movies growing up, which ended up being all 80s movies. And I didn't even really realize that until after I was done the whole model. Because um, I thought it would be a little bit better to do 90s movies with a 90s VHS player and keep the whole theme going. That probably would have been a better idea, but anyways, it is what it is. Um, I thought that was a little bit funny because I didn't realize it until I was actually done all the renders. But those movies are pretty awesome, so if you haven't seen them, definitely check them out. Thank you.
now to wrap up the rest of my labels, I just decided to add a plastic matte texture and apply those to those strips of tape. And then using the line paper which I found on Substance Source, I just dragged that right into my project and assigned it to my library. But that's another material I added over top just to give it that wrinkly effect like so it's not looking too flat, just to look like wrinkly tape or something. And then I went in and just chose an alpha. I actually chose a different brush. I didn't like any of the fonts and then in Photoshop I couldn't find one that was pretty messy like handwriting. So I went in and just with my mouse just directly wrote on these labels. So just an FYI, my writing is not usually this messy. I just wanted it to look a little old school and to look a little bit like it was kind of like a home videotape or somebody quickly just jotted this down at one point in time. Um, but yeah, that's exactly why I did it. So I just decided to go with Back to the Future 2 for my top label. And I chose some random ones like Ryan's birthday party and graduation for the other labels. But that's just how I did that. Just chose a brush and then just directly just wrote right on top of the mesh. And that's everything for the textures. So now jumping into the renderer, I just changed the lighting and the environmental maps a little bit. I ended up going with one of the studio lights, I believe, but uh, just tweak some of the settings. And afterwards, I just change a little bit of the specularities as well on some of these plastics, just depending on the lighting source I actually decided to go with. It just changed the specularity a little bit. So I just tweaked settings a tad, but that's basically everything. Um, this one was a lot of fun to make. It was definitely nostalgic and took me back to my childhood, going to movie stores to rent out movies and just some of these movies being some of my favorites when I was a kid. It was definitely a lot of fun to make. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it and maybe you even learned something along the way. If you did like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one.